A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Video. Today, another one from the Bulgarian MO, 1999 one. I know one of the last videos was also about that, but he got some good questions on this very paper, so I felt like covering another one. We need to find all the positive and negative integer pairs, x, y, satisfying this beautiful cubic individual. x cubed is equal to y cubed plus 2y squared plus 1. And it's a lot of fun putting bounds on this equation and finding the solutions. I hope you are going to enjoy the video. By the way, if you were wondering why I'm not posting too regularly in the last time, only like one video per week, I'm working my ass off for Flemish Wood, my woodworking channel. And by God, even if you're not into woodworking, those videos could be something for you. They turned out fairly well and I'm pretty proud of what I create over there. So please make sure to check them out and help the channel grow. This really helps to push it into the algorithm and let it gain a bit more attraction. So yeah, that would be very cool. Links up here in the info box and on the description. I would highly appreciate it. So if you love your papa, please make sure to show the other channel also some love. And now we are going to dive right in. So my first instinct here was to factor this right hand polynomial in some kind of way. I mean, it almost looks like y plus one, but the whole thing cubed. But this didn't lead to anything at the very start. So what I did after trying around the time a little bit was to try to put some bounds on this equation. Bounding those equations sometimes helps you find intervals in which y and also x are going to be, especially if they are only out of the positive and negative integers. This sometimes doesn't give you too many options once you land at that point. So if you want to put bounds on here, let's put some inequalities in. And the first thing you are going to notice is that y squared doesn't matter what the input y actually is, it's going to be a positive number. Meaning two times a positive number is going to be a positive number plus another positive number one. So the successor of this thing is just going to be yet another positive number. So meaning no matter what it is, so what y cubed on this side right here is, we are always going to have the, the restriction basically, the condition that 2y squared plus 1 is strictly greater than 0. Even if y were equal to 0, then we still have 1, okay? This is always strictly greater than 0. Meaning overall, y cubed plus 2y squared plus 1 is always going to be strictly greater than y to the third power. And this is a very nice inequality that we now got. We now, from this original equation, got the restriction that x to the third power is strictly greater than y to the third power. Now, how does this help? Well, this helps in that regard that what we got here, the cubed, okay? If we take a look at this as some sort of function, okay? We only add in the positive and negative integers, but this doesn't matter. I just want to show you a point. This right here is strictly increasing. The cool thing with strictly increasing functions is that if we just take an input and this input is greater than another input, it's always the case that if we were to cube both sides, then the cubed input will still be bigger than the cubed other input. Just as two little examples. Let's suppose that um, x is greater than zero and that y is greater than zero. Let's just say that x is equal to two. So we got two cubed on this side and this is obviously greater than one cubed. So we got eight here and we got one here. Eight is strictly greater than one. Now, if you were to take the cube root on both sides, we are going to notice that, well, two and one, well, what's the order relation here? Well, obviously two is still strictly greater than one. So this checks out, how about the negative print? So for example, x is less than zero and y is less than zero. You can go through all the cases and you're going to notice that it's going to hold for all of these. Okay, you can also do an abstract proof here by subtracting y cubed on both sides, taking the difference of cubes and then trying to start figuring out the cases and the conditions. But I'm just going to demonstrate it here. The argument that those are strictly increasing is already more than enough to prove our point here. Now, for example, let's do the same thing with negative two and negative one. So this time we have that negative two cubed. Okay, what is negative two cubed? Um, this is negative two cubed, which is negative eight. And what about negative one cubed? Well, this is negative 
one cubed, one cubed is one, so this is negative one. So this time we have that negative one is obviously strictly greater than negative eight. What happens if we take the cube root now? Then we have negative one and negative two here. Well, negative one is also strictly greater than negative two. I think you can see where this is going here. If we now take the cube root on both sides, we are always going to have in each and every case, feel free to prove it down there in the comments behind a little bit, that x is strictly greater than y. Now, cool thing about Diophantine equations, this is what we got here, this is a Diophantine equation that we want to solve, is that the inputs are out of the positive and negative integers. And they have a very, very fundamental property which is going to help us here. Namely, if we have that x is greater than y, then this also does imply, or that's actually equivalent to saying that x is strictly greater or equal to y plus one. Let me demonstrate. If, for example, um, x is equal to three, then this is obviously strictly greater than two at very first, okay? Strictly greater than two, I think you can agree here if this is our y. Now what happens if we were to add one to our y? Then we are going to get that three is strictly greater to two plus one, or I said that this is strictly greater or equal to two plus one, because two plus one is the successor of two, which is three. And this is going to hold for each and every integer that you got out there. This is a very fundamental property that you can prove by induction. I think I even proved this property in my um, bachelor's thesis somewhere. But this is always going to be the case. If x is strictly greater than y, then x, at least in the positive and negative integers, is going to be strictly greater or equal to y plus one. I think you can see the point here. Okay. And now we, we can go back to the first thing that I had in mind. Namely, if we were to kind of bring this into the form y plus one and then cubed, maybe we could do something with it. Let's go basically backwards now, this letter backwards, and instead of taking the cube root, we are going to cube both sides. Meaning this right here is equivalent to saying x cubed is greater or equal to y plus one cubed. And well, y plus one cubed, we can write this out and we also know what x cubed is. x cubed in our case by the original equation given under the condition that it satisfies somehow um, this, this equation for some x and y out of the positive and negative integers. We can plug stuff in and start multiplying things out. So x cubed is nothing other than y cubed plus two y squared plus one and this is greater or equal to. Now we get y plus one cubed. This is the same as y plus one times y plus one squared. That's just a regular binomial formula. So y plus one squared is going to give us y squared plus two y plus one. Now we can start multiplying things out. Now, I mean, on this side right here, I'm going to put an equal sign here. We are going to get um, y cubed and then we are going to get plus two y squared and then y. Okay, and other than that, we got y squared, so plus y squared, and we get plus two y, and one times one is one, plus one. Now we got this right here going. We got y cubed plus two y squared plus one is greater or equal to this chunk. Now we can just start solving this order relation a little bit. We can subtract y cubed on both sides, we can subtract two y squared on both sides, and we also got a one here. Meaning on the left hand side, what we are going to get is just a regular zero. being greater or equal to. And what we still have left is, well, there's not much left, y squared and y plus two y is three y. So what we got now is, after a bit of work, y squared um, plus three y. Now we can go through cases once again. Y can either be positive, negative or zero. This is the three cases that we can go through. But, but we don't even know, uh, need to go through all this way, okay? So we just need to take into consideration when Y is equal to zero and when Y is not equal to zero. Because we have Y as a common factor on both terms. We can factor it out. So Y times, well, this is going to give us three um, or Y plus three, let's put it like this. Okay, now case one y is equal to zero. If we were to plug this in, then, well, um, okay, then we get zero times something, really doesn't matter, which is zero. And zero is greater or equal to zero is a true statement, okay? So y being equal to zero can work out. We need to take a look at the x later if we plug this in. Now case number two, 
y is not equal to zero. If y is not equal to zero, then we can divide both sides by y here, giving us overall, if we were to divide both sides by y, that zero is greater or equal to y plus three. And well, this is very easy to solve. We can just subtract three on both sides, giving us that um, three, no, negative three, is greater or equal to y. Meaning y is somehow less or equal to negative three. But we also know that it can be zero. So meaning y is bounded between zero and negative three. Meaning, what are the four numbers that y can now take? Y can either be, okay, it can be zero, negative one, negative two, or negative three. Hey, this is good because we can now plug our y into here. And then we can see if x cubed is going to be, once we take the cube root of the right hand side, once plugging y in, is indeed out of the positive and negative integers. And what about x? Let's start with the number zero. If we were to plug zero into him here, then we are going to get zero plus zero plus one, meaning the first part that we are going to get is that x cubed is equal to one. If we take the cube root here, we are going to get that x is equal to one. Hey, that's indeed out of the positive and negative integers. That works out. Now, what about negative one? If we were to plug negative one into here, we are going to get um, negative one cubed. Is negative one cubed? So negative one. Then we are going to get plus negative one squared is one. So plus two and then plus one. Negative one and one is going to cancel out, giving us x cubed is equal to two. Taking the cube root, it's going to give us that solution x is equal to the cube root of two. No, no. I think we can all agree that that ain't rational and that ain't out of the integers. Indeed not. Well, that right here is not a solution. We can scratch that. What about plugging negative two into here? If we were to plug negative two into here, we are going to get negative two cubed, which is negative eight. Then we are going to get um, negative two squared is four. Four times two is just eight. So plus eight plus one, and eight and negative eight is going to cancel out. X cubed is equal to one. We know what the solution to this is going to be, namely one. And what about negative three? Okay, that's a bit of a bigger one. So if we have negative three cubed, this is negative three times three is nine times three is 27. So negative 27 plus, then we are going to get negative three squared, which is nine times two is 18 plus one. 18 plus one is 19 and to negative 27, what are we still missing? Well, we are missing exactly um, nine, yeah. We are, um, uh, yeah, we are missing nine, no, eight overall, eight. We are missing eight overall, I'm terribly sorry. So negative 27 plus 19 is going to give us eight. So x cubed is equal to eight. If we were to take the cube root here, we are going to get x is equal to the cube root of eight. And we all know that eight is two cubed, meaning overall we get the cube root of two cubed, which is the same as two. And those right here are all of our pairs. Zero and one, negative two and one, and negative three and two. Or the other way around, because um, our pairs do not com commute, they are asking for the ordered pairs x, y. And this concludes today's adventure into Diophantine equations. And I hope you did enjoy what you have seen today. And if you did, then why not make sure to check out the contents of today's sponsor, Brilliant, who are kind enough to sponsor yet another video here on this channel. Now I was thinking about a better way to visualize especially this part with the strictly increasing function like putting two functions into here but I couldn't think of a nice model to interpret it better here in this short amount of time. But I know of a platform, namely Brian, which is perfect for visualizing mathematical concepts in an extremely intuitive way like you might have never seen before on the internet. Brilliant is your platform for nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer science, chemistry. No matter what it is you want to learn in the STEM field, Brilliant definitely got something up their sleeve for you. And there has never been a better time to try out Brilliant than now. Because at the moment they are brushing up on old courses and they are especially changing the style of the courses. They are upgrading everything to new standards and it's even better than they were before. I didn't know that they could 
improve on their courses like they did now, but they certainly can and they are wonderful. Just look at this geometry section right here. It just looks absolutely fabulous. You grab on the triangle and it's going to tell you something about the interior angles inside of the triangle. And it's just a bliss to work through their courses, which are going to start off very easy with a few explanations and they are going to get gradually harder, such that you are going to understand a topic in an intuitive kind of fashion that is going to help you advance even in other topics STEM. Just take a look at differential equations, start with a mathematics course and then if you go over to Newtonian mechanics and the physics side of things you are going to notice that you can use a lot of the things that you have learned in the differential equation course also over on the physics courses and it's also the other way around especially when it comes to applied mathematics starting in the physics courses and going over to the applied mathematics section which is going to help you a lot in your further studies. So if this feels like a something for you, if you want to try out Preant, at least a big portion of it for completely free, then why not make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, preant.org slash flammable maths. Also, more importantly, if you are one of the first 200 people to actually make use of the link, you are going to get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a freaking great deal considering how much content they already have available on their website and how much content they are adding on a regular basis. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this basically concludes today's video and I hope you had fun. Because I know I did. <laughs> Thumbs up if you got the reference. And yeah, I'm seeing you on next competitive mathematics um, video. I'm certainly having a lot of fun with the series and I'm going to continue it for a while further and they are getting pretty good views so why not yeah take the grind in find a little bit more don't forget to check out Flemish Wood and I'm gonna take this video I wish you guys a flamboyant day ciao